dogs, man. So lovable, such great companions, so dependable, and they're so relatable too, and that's why we see them so much in popular culture, for example, in movies. The problem with this is that a lot of people think they can get away with making horrible shit movies if they just manipulate people's emotions enough with, for example, a dog. Now, does this actually work? Yeah. So I guess Ozzy the Fast and Furriest had the same philosophy. Also known as Ozzy Fast and Furry? Guys, can you just decide on a name? The, the Great Furscape? What the fuck? That's not even clever. Ozzy, insert title here, really puts things into perspective. I guess if nothing else, it offers a good baseline to judge other animated movies off of. The latest rookie, a greenhorn. He arrived the other day. I don't know. But sadly, there isn't a whole lot of information about this movie out there. I didn't have a whole lot to work with going in. Just the trailer and the quote, Bolt meets Secret Life of Pets, from some review site called Kids Cool It. I was also able to find out that the movie had a budget of roughly $10 million, which is a bit low for an animated movie, even less than Norm of the North. Then again, it wasn't really released theatrically, and it looks like since it's released worldwide in late 2016 to early 2017, it is just about broken even. I also noticed that one of the characters was voiced by Rob Schneider, who plays Norm from Norm of the North. The only thing that really stuck out to me about this movie was that they describe it as employing Pixar-like quality and fun. Well, I guess we'll see that for ourselves, won't we? What's going on? What did you do? It's a long story. But well, wasn't that needlessly horrific? Are you trying to scare off 90% of your audience? What kid is gonna watch this scene and not think that he fucking died? Oh, so that was a flash forward. So the dog gets maimed by a car later? I probably wouldn't have so much of a problem with this if what we were shown didn't happen like 10 minutes later in the movie. What's going on? What did you do? It's a long story. It's just so awkwardly placed. If they wanted to set the tone of the movie, why not just make up a new scene instead of lazily copying and pasting something that happens later chronologically in the movie? So then we're introduced to a whole bunch of characters. Good morning, Maddie. How's the big collar, Tex? I know it's for my own good, but I want to scratch. I want to scratch so bad. My family won't even let me drink out of the toilet. You leave out a fresh bowl of water that big and don't expect someone to take a few slips? Having trouble keeping up? Don't worry, only one of them actually plays any kind of role in the movie. So much happens in the first 15 minutes, and almost none of it ultimately means anything. If you got to the theater 10 minutes late, you would probably have a better experience than all the people who had been watching the movie from the beginning. Some scenes in this movie just confuse things even more. So this character really, really hates dogs, and... Finally, we're introduced to the family, and I hope you like this scene because we only get like two more and we don't really see them again. Mm -hmm. no. Ouch! You've had enough bacon. Eat some cereal. Is this the special sawdust flavor? It's got 10 essential vitamins and minerals. It tastes better than sawdust. I'm guessing. This is so unnatural. In this case, all this scene establishes is the mother is an overbearing lunatic and the dad has the maturity of his own kid. Speaking of the kid, look at her hair. I guess the moral of this story is never let the stylist give you the uncooked spaghetti special. Also, can we talk about the voice acting for a second? It's so weird. What's up with all this grunting? Did they forget to write enough dialogue or something? A couple of pointless scenes later and the movie actually starts going somewhere. We're going to Japan! Yay! A four-star hotel, all expenses paid! You know, without that exposition, we would be so lost right now. I really wish that was sarcasm. So the parents have been writing this comic called Star Dog, and they've been invited to an international comic salon in Osaka. They're sending us to the international comic salon in Osaka! Whatever that is, don't bother explaining it to your audience made up of five-year-olds movie. But hold the phone, it looks like Ozzy can't come with them. What? what? I was just at the embassy to pick up the visas. They told me that if you travel to Japan with a dog, he has to go through quarantine. Wait, embassies? Quarantines? What are you talking about? Half the stuff these people are saying is either a line only an adult would understand, or a joke only an adult could possibly find funny. Come on, Mark. He's great with kids. He never messes in the house. He even knows PowerPoint. <laughs> 
I don't get it. The family screws around some more trying to find a place to put the dog while they go on their trip. At long last, they decide to check out one of those dog resorts that you only ever see in kids' movies and talk to one of those villains that would only ever be believable in kids' movies. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. To us, these aren't just dogs. They're our best friends. And we believe in treating our best friends a little special. Hmm. Can't I stay here for three weeks while you go to Japan with Ozzy and Paula? <laughs> Definitely the type of guy I'd leave my pets with. Reluctantly, despite the cost, they agree to go through with boarding Ozzy at the hotel. But as soon as they drive off, it's quickly revealed that their little dog spa is none other than a dog concentration camp. <laughs> Fucking hell. You heard me. It turns out that all the dogs from Blue Creek get put in this prison camp and are used for forced labor. Welcome to dog Schwitz, fucko. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't really know if I should feel scandalized that they thought this was an appropriate theme for kids, or sing its praises for its brazen disregard for the likes of common sense media, and the expectations of literally every parent who took three seconds to consider this movie when they plucked it out of the value bin at Walmart. I know there are examples of dark, successful kids movies out there, like Chicken Run, but look at the two boxes side by side. Which one screams, get ready for Jimmy to have a couple of sleepless nights, to you? Can someone explain what the muzzle is happening? Oh shit. I mean, Doggy Death Camp, questionable, but this kind of language, way too far. As soon as he lands in prison, Ozzy makes a break for it, and the prison guard dogs start to chase him at a leisurely pace. Hey, killer, check this out. W what Who's killer? Is that killer? Never mind, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you stretch your legs? You just love to run and run. Based off of what? He tried to run away when you told him you're gonna keep him prisoner forever. Are you telling me that all the other dogs just submitted and accepted their fate as soon as they found out where they were? So the warden here apparently has an obsession with dog treat sculptures? And if you think this is the writers trying to add depth to the character, no. It's a plot device for later. You see, I I've been brought here by mistake. My, my family left me in a luxury health resort and- Is that so? You see, that makes perfect sense. The family obviously just forgot to check the box that said, please don't torture my pet. Easy mistake to make. Then he's taken down to his cell and is introduced to his cellmate, Franky. Yep. I mean, I've heard stupid dog names before, but this one really crosses the line. I won't be here for long. My family is back in a month and they'll come and get me. <laughs> sure, and they're coming for me too. When was your family gonna come for you, Remy? In a month. And how long ago was that? A year. And you, Ross? Wait, what? Let's just think about this for a second. Because it's so expensive, we can assume that most of the customers are going to be old millionaires dropping their dogs off the pet hotel because they actually care about them, unlike the prisoners from Shawshank or the toys in Toy Story 3, which, let's not kid ourselves, this movie clearly has a bone to pick with. So picture this. You come back from vacation, you ask for your dog from the pet hotel, and they say they don't have it. Who are you gonna blame? 10 o'clock, lights out! What is this, the North Pole? Hey, Chester! This is Ozzy, my new cellmate! It's his first day! Exactly. You guys are trouble, Funky. Now that's real nice. It's great to see that relatable Scotty prisoner archetype thrown in there for all the parents who haven't slipped their wrists at this point. So their factory operation manufactures frisbees? That's it? They're gonna secretly kidnap hundreds of dogs and make them manufacture frisbees. What kind of fucking sick joke is this? Also, where are all the other dogs? I see maybe 20 dogs working here. Even with shifts, why do you need so many of these guys? Especially since they're probably pampered pooches that by all reasoning are in no condition to do anything other than sit around. This cafeteria scene is a perfect example of just how bad the writers are at developing characters. The animators first make the mistake of showing their hands, where half the cards are identical. Yikes, that shit could have used a couple more minutes to render. Uh, I mean, cook. Did I mention this movie won an award for best score? And yet, when they're given the perfect opportunity to use it, instead of these crazed grunting noises, they don't even bother. Is that... Oh. Whoa! I said, <laughs> is that Vito? But he's just a chihuahua! Casual dog racism. I love it. A couple of scenes later, and we get introduced to the Mafia Dawn dog, called Vito. You know what this movie could really use right now? A plot- More characters! Somebody tell me who that clown is. 
The latest rookie, a greenhorn. He arrived the other day. I guess we know the budget didn't go towards reshoots. Later, we find out that Vito has some kind of interest in Ozzy and invites him to talk. It's not really clear why he'd want to have anything to do with him. Ozzy's been nothing but a screw-up. Unless they're alluding to the running thing, which we've had virtually no evidence of, but it's been hinted at more times than I can count. I hate you like running. I thought you ain't half bad at it. God damn it. When did this even become a thing? He's literally run once, and that was to save his skin. Is that it? Are you going to ask me to kill someone? No. I'm gonna ask you to kill yourself. <sighs> could you run that by me one more time? I'm gonna ask you to kill yourself. <sighs> Why? To kill yourself running! <laughs> it came out of nowhere. There was literally no point to that line except to make a cheap joke. This is a kid's movie for crying out loud. Is there some less inappropriate translation of that line in Spanish? Or are these writers so tone deaf that they didn't even think for a minute this might be a terrible idea? Then Vito takes him onto a racetrack and reveals that there's some kind of dog racing ring here. Prisoners against gods. Their best against the our best. And no, the plot doesn't have a direction at this point. They're just shoveling things in to keep the runtime afloat. Vito offers him a slot on the team. I want you to be my partner, hmm. my protege. I think that with you, we can beat those sons of cats. And in exchange, I can make your life here much easier. And Ozzy says he'll think about it. But when he tells his friends, they're against this idea. So Ozzy goes and tells Vito he declines. I told you yesterday, I can make your life here very easy or I can make it hard. Actually, I'm pretty sure you only said the first part, but who cares about all that pesky consistency garbage? Then he has a little chat with the warden to tell him he's not interested in working for Vito and wants advice from the warden. I don't know. You bested Flash, and now Vito wants to make you his dog? Well, we can't allow that kind of behavior here. What? I thought it was our best versus their best. Their best against the owl best. What exactly makes this type of behavior against the rules? And it's not like Ozzy told him that Vito threatened to kill him. You'll agree to be his runner, but really, you'll be running for me. How? No, no, wait, I, I don't understand. This is becoming so overcomplicated and filled beyond anyone's capacity to follow. What does anyone have to gain from any of this? Is the warden trying to get back at Vito or something? Clearly he has the authority to just throw him in a box whenever he pleases. What is he even accomplishing by rigging the races? Consider the offer? Wait, who are these people again? Oh, it's the family. I guess I forgot since, you know, they have been on screen for the last half an hour. Surprise, surprise, King Candy doesn't have the dog. He tells them Ozzy died of dog flu. And to add insult to injury, he also gives them a fraudulent veterinary bill, which they're gonna have to pay. This is all very odd. I can't leave my healthy dog here and have you give me back. This? Without any further explanation? Honey. It's absurd! But perfectly legal. According to the release forms you signed, we are exempt from any responsibility. <gasps> are you f- Here, let me just calm down a little bit and explain a few things. First of all, let's assume that the family didn't bother to call the establishment for the 30 days they were in Japan. And don't give me that bullshit about how expensive it is to call overseas. If they can pay for dog fucking Shangri-La, then they can afford a goddamn long-distance call. Second of all, this has happened to other people before, right? and Blue Creek would have had to, in the past, explain why their dog just suddenly disappeared. And third, and most importantly, we're just going to assume that despite all of this, none of these people bothered to talk to, I don't know, a lawyer? What, and like use common sense? Eh, we'll just leave a bad Yelp review. Or should I say, bark review? Well, that's the last we're gonna see of these assets for a while. We cut back to Ozzy, and he agrees to run for... I don't even fucking know where we're going with this thing at this point. The Warden? Vito? Killer? They have one of those crosscut scenes where Ozzy is using the same dialogue on both characters. The only reason why I identified this gimmick is because they made fun of it in Shrek 2. Here it just comes off as yet another storytelling technique that they're ripping off from a far better movie. And remember, we're partners now. Let me just clear it up a little bit. Ozzy needs to win for Vito and lose for Grunt. And his friends make the painfully obvious point that he can't do both at the same time. And of course, because we're obviously too stupid to understand this without it being directly shoved down our throats, Ozzy is just going to have to escape. Chester? <laughs> Forget Chester. <laughs> Chester doesn't he want to know. Are you crazy? Before they give us the whole synopsis of the rest of the movie, we cut to a scene with Ozzy training at an agility course. Even though he's going to be running a basic circuit, I guess he needs to practice jumping, risking injury that would prevent him from competing at all. In order to find a way out, they need to find the sewer's blueprints, which means they need to get into the warden's office. And apparently that means involving the Scotty dog, the one who doesn't want to have anything to do with the plan and will probably just slow you down. That dog? 
Okay, just checking. The entire scene is just a shit show of stupid cartoon tropes. There is no way that they should have been able to get away with any of what they're doing here. I don't even know where to start. Somehow their plan involves getting the dachshund to clean the windows outside of the warden's office so we can warn them when the warden gets back. I don't mean to split hairs or anything, but I don't get why he couldn't have just been on the ground, maybe distracting him or something. They find the blueprints and wouldn't you know it, it's just in the nick of time. Good thing you snatched the blueprint away before he opened that door. Just kidding, you actually didn't and there's no way he didn't see you. I mean, come on, how are they getting away with any of this? Doc is practically sitting right in the way. And did we forget the dogs have noses? What, so the warden can't smell any of these guys? Isn't that like the most identifying ability that dogs have? Fuck me. Gee, ain't it just zany that they are able to execute this impossible maneuver? At this point, they have the blueprint they need so they can dig underneath the prison. Somehow? Nothing in the blueprint suggests that there isn't any type of construction in the way. They don't know anything more about digging out of the prison than before they went and almost killed themselves getting that document. After that mystifying montage, we finally arrive at the big day, I think. They pack up the stadium with dogs to watch the race, but Ozzy is nowhere to be seen. And, and if you think that Ozzy ran away while there were the fewest amount of people possible around, then you expected a little too much out of this plot, and we'll see why in a moment. And the stadium is filled with the cry, Where is Ozzy? <laughs> They apparently brought books with them to a race? It's been a whole minute and the race hasn't even started yet. Good thing I've got this book here, so good to them, I'm really angry. But surprise, surprise, Ozzy actually does end up coming to the race rather than just running away when he had the chance. After that brief moment of crushing suspense, they finally start the race and wait, is Ozzy starting at the same position as the other dog while running on a track of different lanes? You know what, we've got bigger fish to fry. It turns out Ozzy's master plan is to kill the power in the middle of the race so that he can make his getaway. So the whole thing with him having to double cross the war in, the mob boss was just completely pointless. They hide in some boxes and are about to be shipped out, but the prison guard dog, he finds them just as they're about to escape for good, foiling the whole operation. Well, it was a noble effort, pointlessly attending a race that you didn't need to, and hiding in cardboard boxes that are definitely checked before going out. Really masterful stuff here. As they're being taken down to their cells, it's revealed that the Scotty dog screwed them over because the warden was going to maim the shit out of him. They threatened to break my front paws. But Ozzy never even told him the plan. How would he know where they would be? And even if he did tell him the plan, why wouldn't the warden just punish them outright instead of waiting for him to almost escape? Hey, hey, huh? not you. The warden's going to deal with you personally. The next part is just truly absurd. After Gestapo Dog brings Ozzy up to the warden's office, Warden Grunt corners him and is about to straight up rip him to shreds. But then Ozzy notices one of the warden's very fragile dog bone structures. The warden tells him to be careful with them because he spent a lot of time on them. Ozzy tries to use this to his advantage and the warden tears his bitch throat out. The end. Just kidding, that bullshit actually works. He distracts the warden, getting him outside of his own office, and then Ozzy locks himself inside. The warden and the chief sound an alarm, and all the guard dogs just stand around looking confused. Hey, uh, what do you reckon we're supposed to do when we hear that blaring alarm sound? Yeah, you think we're supposed to lock the gate or secure the exits or something? Nah, let's we'll just sit around like fucking morons, lol. Then Ozzy gives a speech about how even though the races were rigged, they've already lost because they're oppressed by the warden. Which isn't really true, the warden is just a pawn of the owner, and besides, like I said, this is basically an admission that the whole plotline with the racing was null. At this point, my focus has been tossed around so much that I can't even comprehend what's going on. The payoff of the surviving viewers is a painful fight scene between the prisoners and the prison guards. Yes, of course they win, and of course there's a series of scenes where all the stupid main characters are reunited with their stupid owners. This movie went on for an hour and 30 minutes and still couldn't make me care about any of them getting a happy ending. Except for Franky. Mm-mm. Bet he's real happy he's a wiener dog right now, if you know what I mean. And then all the characters beat up on that kid from the beginning. Yay. Wow, this movie really comes full circle, don't it? And by that I mean I wanted to kill myself in the beginning, and now I still want to kill myself at the end. And then it's over. And the credits that they probably spent more time animating than the rest of the movie begin to roll. I just don't really know how to feel about this movie. The animation was lazy given what software they probably had available to them, and the voice acting was hit or miss. It's not like it was done by amateurs, they clearly knew how to make a movie, like in general. If you really wanted to, I guess you could chalk a lot of it up to having a comparatively low budget for an animated movie, so I guess we should think about the things that don't result from just money. I'll give them this, the general idea of the movie wasn't the worst part about it, Shawshank with dogs, but it's nothing new and it was horribly executed. The characters were all paper thin because the producers thought that just making them pets was enough to get people to like them, 
But even that doesn't work when you just copy and paste the same character models over and over and over again so that there's no variation between them. The only thing that really stood out about this movie was the shock value, but nobody who buys this movie is going to expect that to be a feature of this unless someone told them first. I know this is criminally redundant at this point, but like I said at the very beginning of the video, they said that it was going to be Pixar-like quality. Ozzy the Fast and Furious is nowhere near a Pixar quality movie nor would I ever expect it to be. It's a $10 million movie produced internationally. Of course it's not gonna be good, even in its own right. It's about as good as Norm of the North and less insulting than the Emoji movie, but I think the fact that I had to place it in the same sphere as those two fucking horrible movies of vastly different budgets just goes to show you that even the amount of money going into a movie is no excuse to make something as lazy and derivative as this poor excuse for entertainment. Now I tried to make this review as entertaining as possible, but I can't even recommend this as a so bad it's good movie. It's just bad.